damn, I did a good job. Just plopping this in. Face is still in the wet process, if you know what I mean. On my shit, doing my thing. <laughs> Today we are going to be doing a get ready with me while I answer some questions. Bow, 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 bow. First I have to put this on of course because this is just how we do things now. <laughs> I have this little pink one and it always has so much makeup on it. <laughs> I like it, don't you? Okay, let's get out our brushes. And my giant tub, which carries my makeup. It's about to go down. Let's go. Okay guys, I feel like I haven't done one of these videos in a very long time. So I figured that I would. And I'll do it while I get ready to go to the gym. So I did get a couple of questions. <laughs> about Zach and I, because if you guys have been on here for a while, here am I slicking down my eyes and my brows, you know that Zach and I, we're living together in my other apartment, and then we broke up for a little bit. We, well, if we really wanna go into the whole thing, then we were engaged in December, 2021? Shoot, what year are we in? Babe! Are you free to come on the YouTubes? Anyways, yeah, we were engaged and then uh, we broke it off. I moved into this place and we were going to kind of see how things were and now we are back together. We've been back together for a while now, right babe? Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing a little Q&A for YouTube and people are, there's your head. People are asking how we are. So these are like a couple of the questions that we got. How did you and Zach mend things? Can you and Zach do a video on living together and how everything's going? How are you and Zach since moving back in together and realigning with each other? Um, separately and individually. What do you think, baby? I think I love I you. I think I love you. I think that you I... You think? You said that first. I know. So it's just for your time. I'm gonna be doing my eyebrows while I, you tell me... I know me that I love you. ...how much you love me. And I know that you're the one for me. Mm. And since getting back together, we have been better about communication, even better than we were before, and making sure that we express what our needs are and our wants are with each other. Yeah. I'm and not so good at doing that. Spending more time, quality time together. Yesterday we played the adventure challenge. Mm -hmm. It was fun. And yeah. When did we move back in together? September. September? -ish. Yeah. 2022? Mm-hmm. October, September, October, something like that. Oh, yeah. Mm. Thank you, baby. You're welcome, baby. Kissy. I love you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, Zach and I are back together. We've been back together since September. Um, I mean, in short, I guess if we're going to describe what it's all been like and what like happened basically we do have a video on it so i'll pop it up here somewhere up in the sky um yeah but we were just going through a really rough time together um i i was going through a lot during that time i mean if you guys uh my last saw my last series which was the first pro show 
literally just blobbing this on in places. Um, we broke up a week out from that show and I don't think anyone really knew because I didn't tell anybody. Um, but yeah, I tried not to let it affect like my prep and how things went and how my mindset was, but it's just like, you, I felt like I was, my whole life was falling apart because I was going to be coming home from Puerto Rico and like moving out and everything, like it just felt like the sky was falling. Like the whole, how do I explain this? I mean, when you're gonna marry somebody, you know, that person is like, you can see your whole future through that person. And then I was going to be leaving. So it was just a really tough time, but we had to go through that time of like breaking apart and really just figuring out like what we wanted individually and how we were gonna work on ourselves individually so that when we come together, we can be a better couple. Um, and that's what happened. Like we came back together, we set a new boundaries, new things that we wanted to implement into our relationship so that we can become closer together and communicate better because like me on one hand, I'm not, the, even though I can like talk about it, I could talk about like some things here on YouTube. I'm not the best at communicating how I feel, sees. I'm very much, my comfort zone is like the masculine and Zach is very good at expressing like how he's feeling and what's going on and I am not so good at it. For him, it's probably like pulling teeth to try and get me to talk about how I'm feeling. Um, so I'm, that's something that I have gotten so much better at. Like I wouldn't even be able to be on this YouTube channel right now talking to you guys about it if I hadn't had any growth in it, but I have and it's gotten better. Um, so yeah, we're, we've been living together for a while now and it's been great. He's not my coach anymore. That was another thing that was a huge stressor on our relationship is that literally he was my bodybuilding coach from like when I started bodybuilding, um, which we'll kind of go into, I guess another question that we have because people were wondering, um, where did it go? It is right here. How long did you compete in the NPC before getting your pro card? So if you guys don't understand like the difference between the NPC and like the IFBB pro, so the NPC is where you compete as an amateur um, bodybuilder. And so you compete in that until you get your pro card and then you compete as a pro, which is what feeds into the Olympia, which is what we're currently going after right now. So my first show that I ever did was actually Summer Shredding by Christian Guzman um, back in 2020. So that was my first show, it's 2023 right now. Um, two weeks after that, I got first in that one, and then I got a sponsorship by Alphalete by doing that, because that's what you win for your prize, and then I think you win some money or something like that, too. Um, damn, I did a good job. Just blopping this in. So, that was my first show, and I am so happy that I made that my first show, because, um, pause for dramatic effect because when you're a newbie and you're getting into this industry um it can be really scary and that show was such a good beginner show to do because it was not only like a bodybuilding show but it was also a really good networking opportunity so you can meet a lot of people that are interested in the same thing that you are there's a lot of opportunity when it comes to like actually winning the show versus like some of the shows when you win, I mean, most of the shows, when you win in the MPC world, there's nothing, you don't like get anything in return, which is totally fine. That's why some people um, struggle to make a living as like a bodybuilder because like you don't get paid unless you're a pro. And even when you're a professional, they don't even pay you, they don't pay you um, that much. And that's totally fine because I'm really not, in it to get paid to be a bodybuilder. I do it because I really, I really love it. And you guys enjoy watching the journey as well. So that was my first show. Um, I, then my second show was two weeks later, which was 
my first uh, show, like actually in the NPC, it was the Della Garcia. I got first place in that. And then, so that meant since I qualified like top five at that show, um, cause you have to get top five, I think in order to get invited to like a national show or to qualify to even be in a national show. Um, so then I did a national show, I think in 2021, two national shows. And then I got my pro card in Arizona. So, and then I did my, and then I was a pro. So from 2020, I was in a MPC, I think for like a year. And then I got my pro card. Um, it doesn't always happen that way. I was just very blessed to get it, I guess that quickly if you would say, but I was definitely lifting and training like a bodybuilder for a while before that. And then once I found out like, hey, you know, my division also, this is brand new and I've been trying it out and I really love it. It's the Charlotte Tilbury highlighter and it has like a little thing like that. And I just put it here and like here and here when my face is still in the wet process, if you know what I mean. I got an itch over here. Anyways, so yeah, that's how long I've been in it. Now I'm a pro, so I can't, I have to compete as a pro from here and beyond. So we're gonna blend this and then we'll get to another question. Next question. Did you get everything tested for your coach after the parts were missing? So um, if you haven't watched that video, you probably don't know what she's talking about, but Every time that I start a new bodybuilding prep, I go and get blood work done to make sure that everything is where it needs to be health wise. But when I went, I had like this long list of uh, stuff that I needed to get um, and they only did 25% of it. <laughs> so I have to go back and do another one. Um, and weirdly, uh, when, you, when I post this, um, I would have already gotten my second round of blood work done. So I'm getting it done on Monday again. My coach has me do it in the mid luteal phase of my menstrual cycle because he says that that's the best time for me to test some of these things, especially like progesterone, which is one of the ones that he wanted me to get like above all else checked. And that was a, one of the ones that was off. So I'm getting it done. By the time you see this, it's already done. And I will be working on a YouTube video to uh, show you guys like all of that. Oh my God, this is so weird. Like not looking at the camera and putting this on my face. But I put the Fenty, you're probably gonna see like the little reflection of my camera, but it's the Fenty under eye. Um, Pro filter and it's in banana. And the reason that I like to get it in the banana, I almost said flavor, banana flavor. The banana color is it has a slightly yellow tint. So it helps with under eyes because when you have under eye bags, it has a purple hue and the color that cancels out the purple hue is yellow. Color theory. <laughs> I guess all those years of being a cosmetologist paid off for something. What to do next in my makeup routine? I can't remember. Okay, okay. Got this Kat Von D. This is just like the translucent powder. I only use that powder under my eczema balls and I use this for everything else um, because that's way more expensive. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm just gonna use that for here. And then I kind of go right here and do a little blop. I know this like get ready with me is like kind of quick. Like I'm, I'm focused more on the questions than I am of like what's actually going on with my makeup. But I'll have all the products linked below just in case there's anything interesting that you like. Okay, I've been trying to master the little button nose thing that everybody does, but the truth of the matter is, I do not have a button nose. And it always looks really good on girls that already have like a really teeny tiny nose. So I've just been trying to, and I'll use the little Huda, Huda, Huda? Hourglass, I thought it was Huda, 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 Beauty. Why can't I say it right? <laughs> but whatever. So I just go, if you can see, hopefully you can see. 
right under here. Oh my God, that's a lot. And then like right above, I saw that a trick was to like scrunch your nose up and see where that crease happens. And then that's where to do the line. So I've been trying to do that. Let's just blend it in and see what happens. Okay, before we get our highlighter on, I'm gonna answer a question. That's backwards. Here we go. I literally love this one. It's gold. It works very well. I don't know if you can see that, but hopefully you can see that. I get this little teeny tiny one. Beep, 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 beep. And then I do like a little dot right here on the nose. And then I kind of blend it out with this little fluffy brush. Fluffy brush. And then go down the bridge, do, 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 just a little bit. I used to go down like all the way, but I don't know why it just like looks weird to me now. And then I just blend it up. But the question that I got, which I really liked, it was a good question. Tips on how to see yourself more objectively when you struggle with bad body image days or bad body dysmorphia. Um, that's a really good one. So. One of the things that I have talked about before, I think either on here or on a podcast, um, is this idea of having like toxic positivity. And what I mean by that is like, there's some times where um, people just tell you like, just be positive, like just be positive, like just love yourself the way that you are and blah, blah, blah. And like, that is great. I love the idea around like being positive instead of just being, you know, what you speak into existence is so important and has such an impact on how you feel about yourself. But um, what I mean by like toxic positivity is to where like you really don't feel that great about yourself, but you keep on just like saying the complete opposite, almost to the point where like, you know, you're like, I'm just like lying to myself. And that doesn't mean that you're not like the most incredible person and like you deserve all of the happiness and the worthiness in the world. But sometimes it's like, you just don't feel it. So when you're just like walk into the mirror and you're like, I'm the most beautiful person ever. Today's gonna be a great day. It feels so, it feels like ridiculous. So one thing that I do that has helped me because obviously, confidence or getting over body dysmorphia or things that you feel about your body it doesn't happen overnight and if you can kind of bridge the gap between like i hate everything i look terrible to being like i'm the best i'm amazing i look great the middle ground is just neutrality and it's just being neutral about the way that you look and the way that you feel about your body um, because eventually what that can lead to is you actually truly embodying the confident, worthy, beautiful person that you truly are without having to like fake it all the time. Cause there's like, I partially believe in like fake it till you make it, but I also believe in like, just kind of like being neutral about it is also very helpful too. Like instead of waking up in the morning and being like, oh my God, I look awful and I'm ugly and look at this over here and look at that over here. Just like being neutral about it. Like, you know, I'm not where I want to be, but that doesn't mean that I can't be where I want to be, you know? And then you don't have to like, yeah, like make it, make it, make it. And there's going to be some days where you wake up and you're like, I look great. I am awesome. And that's good too. So just, I think that it's almost like I felt like being neutral about how my body looked or how I felt about it wasn't allowed. Like I thought that I always had to be like so absolutely positive and like gung ho about it. But I found that by being neutral about it, when I wasn't feeling that great about my body, it actually helped me get to the point where I felt really good about it, you know? because I knew that me feeling super negatively about it didn't get me anywhere, like whatsoever. It actually just made it worse. Um, because once you humor the thoughts of like, I look like I look terrible, blah, blah, blah. 
oh, poor me, whatever. Then you really start to believe it. So that's my, that's my spiel on it. Try being a little, like if you can't be super positive about how you look in the moment, that is okay. Just try being neutral about it and be like, this is where we're at, bro, it's okay. And I'm gonna accept the things the way that they are right now. Like how I look right now, I'm just gonna accept it. But that doesn't mean that I can't grow. That doesn't mean that I can't change my body. Um, my coach has been working with me with the, um, I think she calls it the and or concept where sometimes we believe that we can't, there can't be like an and or an or. What I'm trying to say is like, I can't, people believe that like you can't love your body where it is right now. And if you love your body where it is right now, like why would you want to change it? Does that make any sense? Like you, it has to be like one or the other. Like you can't love your body and want to change it at the same time, but you can. So that's just what I gotta say about that. Clean. I thought my makeup was gonna turn out really bad because usually when I do makeup like on camera, because I'm not like doing it in my normal way, it usually turns out way worse than it actually looks, but it's not too shabby today. Okay, this is what I use for my eyes and my brows. Kat Von D in the color medium brown. And I use my little pointy, a little pointy tip brush. It's like pointed and slanted and I like to squeeze it so it's extra pointy. Um, but I'm gonna try and do my eyebrows while answering you guys a question, but I'm probably gonna look like while I do it. Anyway, so the next question is, how do you handle comparison? Okay, so I actually listened to an episode on this because I've been struggling with this a lot lately, especially when like for social media, like like for example, in my world, like I can, I I compare myself to like other fitness influencer people or other bodybuilders, but this is like it, it happens in all aspects of our life. And one thing that I realized is that we have been struggling with this like for as long as we can remember. A lot of people say that it's just because of social media that we're doing it. Yes, it's more readily available, but you can remember back when like you were a kid and say, um, one of your friends had something new that they got for Christmas and like you didn't also have that thing. There's comparison there, you know? Like we have been struggling with this for a while. Okay, we have one eyebrow on. We'll see how this goes. It's just really hard to like talk because <laughs> usually when I'm putting it on, I'm like super focused. Anyway, so back onto the comparison. Like, <sighs> what I was saying is that we've been dealing with this for such a long time. Now it's just more readily available because you open up your phone and there's a bunch of other people that is just blasted in front of your face. Why do you think that the apps do that? Like right when you open up Instagram, TikTok especially, they go right into the main feed. So the first thing that you see is other people's uh, videos, other people's photos. They do that on purpose so that you stay on the app longer and so that you scroll. Um, but, excuse me, onto the comparison aspect of it. I know there's like, there's the quote where people say, comparison is the thief of joy. And I always was like, yeah, 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 that's a cool phrase, but like, what does that actually mean? And I have realized it and experienced it firsthand, what it actually meant and felt like. Because when I felt like I was doing so great, like I was on it, like I was just focusing on myself and kind of having like a tunnel vision um, mindset to where I don't focus on what everybody else is doing with their life because it doesn't matter. And what I mean by that is like, what, how much money they have, like how many followers they have, what clothing they have, what, what vacations they have, stuff like that, like it doesn't matter. But what I realized is that comparison was stealing my joy to where it didn't matter what I was doing in my life, even if it felt really good, like if I was like on my shit, doing my thing, I was like in flow. 
when I would go on social media and I would compare myself to like what somebody else was doing, all of a sudden, all those great things that I was doing didn't even matter anymore. It was like, poof, the cardio that you just did, the healthy meal that you just did, like the video that you just made, none of it matters because what they're doing is way better and it's way cooler and you suck. So that's what comparison is the thief of joy truly means is that it literally just discredits everything that you've done to make it seem like it amounts to nothing. So the way that I, at least I've been dealing with it lately is instead of feeling because my alarm in my head is if I start feeling like negatively towards like looking at someone else's something or whatever they're doing, then that's a sign to me that I'm telling myself that I cannot also have those things, that it's only meant for them and that I can't have it. And that's a scary thought to think is because like, I do want to have those things. And um, when I am looking at it in like a negative way and I'm like, oh man, like now everything that I'm doing yes then I'm telling myself that I can't also be in that position or I am not also worthy of having that thing. I just realized that I'm having this full conversation with you and um, I have one eyebrow on. <laughs> but that's how I've been dealing with it lately. Also, um, literally just not consuming any content. Like I straight up do this thing called the trigger finger where if I go on Instagram, I do my trigger finger immediately to profile for me to post something. I'm telling you, it sounds ridiculous because I'm a content creator. So it's like, how do you not consume content? I do everything in my power not to consume content for that very reason, because I need to focus on what I'm doing, what I want to make in the world and the impact that I want to make. And if I just keep watching what everybody else is doing, then it's going to make me conform to what they're doing and how they live their life when I'm a completely different person and I wanna make a different kind of impact in my life um, and in other people's lives. So that's what I've been doing lately is like literally just not consuming. Also, another thing that I'm going to add is that what's crazy is that we let so much of what is on the internet affect like our real world and what's on the internet's not even the real world like we literally i can imagine us like literally stepping into the online world and thinking that like it's reality and it's not it's like the uh, like the other day i was really stuck in this like comparison loop of like it in my head it like it didn't matter what I did because I was never going to be good enough or amount to enough and I was on social media you know what I mean and I was doing the one thing that I promised myself that I wasn't going to do anymore and that was like just going and like looking at other people's things and like what they were doing and what everyone else is buying or going or whatever or saying and then I got out and then I went and I took a drive and I went to the gym and it was almost like my eyes started like readjusting to like the real world and I was like blink 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 and there's trees and there's sun and I'm sitting here at home like everything I do shocks and it's not the real world like we're basing so much of how we feel and what we do and how we show up in the world on something that's not real okay lastly the iconic eyeliner that I have to do all the time. It's the NYX Epic Ink Eyeliner. I've been using it forever. It literally has a little felt tip pen. Look at that preciseness. And I just do the flicker Rooney. but we're gonna answer a couple more questions. We have two, two more. Um, any tips to keep yourself from binging or what helps you get out of the binge cycle? Um, obviously, I'm not a doctor, but I am somebody who has struggled with binge eating. I'm currently washing my hands because I have so much makeup. I am somebody that has that struggled with binge eating from like since I was 15 years old. Um, so I've done a lot of like work to help me cope with it. And the best thing that I have done is like have tools that help me while I'm in it. Um, because it's gonna be it's gonna be a process like especially if you've been doing it for a long time you have to think about how long you've been conditioned to act in that pattern which is craving or slash like urge react guilt and shame 
every time. So you have the urge to want to binge. You start having like anxiety about it. You're like, <gasps> like, should I do it? No, no, I can't, I can't. And then you do it and you feel like the bliss and the relief for a little bit. And then it goes back to being shame and guilt and regret. It's the same pattern loop. And the longer that you've been doing that pattern loop, the harder it is for you to get out of it. Um, but me having tools that I have like literally in my tool belt to use while I have that urge, like once it's, once it like comes on has helped me so much. And like one of them that I do is it's called the floor. I call it the floor is lava. And I literally will sit on my couch and I pretend that the floor is lava and I can't get up because the floor is lava because it always happens at nighttime when I want to binge. And if I get up and like go to the fridge or something that I'm going to end up binging and that's not what I want to do. And all it would take for me is to sit there with myself for at least like five minutes because if I just give my body time to process what is happening and the urges that I'm feeling instead of reacting immediately, I am more likely to not binge than to binge because I want you to think about it like if you've ever had like a binging episode, how quickly you react to the urge. The quicker that you react to the urge, obviously more likely you're going to go through with it, but the more time that you take in pause and actually have a pattern interruption, these are what they called a pattern interruption, you are more, you are less likely to binge. So your normal pattern is urge, binge, regret, guilt, and shame. So if you pattern interrupt that instead going urge, wait, I'm going to sit and I'm going to sit here with my thoughts and pretend the floor is lava and I'm not going to get up until, you know, the feeling has passed. That's a pattern interruption from your normal day to day. So having stuff like that on deck is helpful. I am just realizing right now how Italian I am because when I speak, I'm like moving and I'm jumping around and I'm moving my hands. Italian in me, I swear. If you guys watched my intro video for the journey to nobody, um, my dad and my mom are in it and my dad's in it and literally like he's moving his hands the whole, my dad's the Italian one. He's moving his hands the whole time and we got some like behind the scenes photos of him and every photo, his hands are like in the air. Um, see where I get it from. Okay, the last question is, um, some people are asking, I have two of them about like keeping your hormones regular and um, any hormonal struggles that I've had. So I told you guys that um, I switched from a hormonal birth control to a non-hormonal, which was the copper IUD. So I went from the pill to the copper IUD. And um, the purpose of that being is that like my coach was telling me that a lot of people that are on the hormonal birth control have struggle with um, a lot of different things, but the main one being like, it's harder for them to lose weight, especially when they're trying to get like super shredded, like I'm trying to for my next show. So I don't know quite yet the um, uh, effects that that's going to have on my weight loss. I'll know a little bit more like as we're deeper in prep, but I do know right now is that I do feel a lot better now that I have switched. I know that I was on a lower dose of hormonal birth control, so it wasn't like affecting me too much, but um, getting off of it, I felt a little bit more like, kind of like a, like a fog was lifted. And then if we're talking about like hormonal, as far as like blood work type stuff that you have to get, like, like your thyroid and like insulin levels and progesterone and stuff like that. Like I was talking about previous, like get blood work done. And most doctors will only give you like a very basic, um, blood work panel done and they don't go deep into like all of these different things um and that's why i love like my coach because he we go like super super in depth and you can go to like um either like a i'm gonna be going to like a lab corp which is like in like walgreens it's in like a convenience store um you can do it through there and they can take insurances even if you don't have insurances it's relatively inexpensive um if you don't, but doing those things regularly is so important and barely any people do it. The only reason that I do it is because I'm a bodybuilder and what I put my body through each year is so excruciating that like I really need to, but I'm really glad that I 
became a bodybuilder because I don't think I ever would have done that and I wouldn't have known that um, maybe uh, my insulin was a little bit higher than normal, that my testosterone was actually lower than most women. Like all of these things, like I wouldn't have known and I wouldn't have known like how to combat it and how to fix it. So that's the biggest thing that I recommend, but obviously check with your doctor. I am not a doctor. Um, try and get like a full blood panel done. This is just the basics of like what I know about it. I don't know really, I don't really know that much about it, but yeah, I'm gonna put on a little eyeliner and then we'll be done. downstairs because I keep it in my purse but I'm loving this Fenty lip gloss it's in the color honey waffles it's more warm you guys know I like the warm tones this is how it looks you're pretty right I think it's pretty well I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, I love you all so much and you're more powerful than you think. Bye.